seeds down pretty good. So we're going to watch our vacuum rates on these big seeds. Those of you that are running John Deere vacuums, how many of you are only running that in corn? Like you have a separate corn planter that is just for, uh, that is vacuum and just for corn. Are you using the E-sets? Yes. Okay. Nobody else is? Nobody else has it. Okay, if you have a, a John Deere vacuum and you're only using it in corn, I recommend E-sets. And that's again from precision planning. You will, you will be blown away by the difference. You will be, you won't be to a precision meter, but you will be very close. And you will never get there without E-sets, I'm here to tell you. And like I said, in my, in my world, an ESET is here, a precision meter is here, and a 4000 Kinsey is there. Now somebody's going to come along and knock one of these guys out. But right now, that's what we're finding in our meter room. Okay. Did we cover the additive for John Deere well enough without me getting thrown in jail? Okay. All right. Probably. Yeah, pretty nice. Like I said, it's very close to the Kinsey. Um, do you have this sheet? You can take one of those if you want. Just give me the rest back. So again, that's the same sheet as what we handed around for the brush meter. So every single meter out there has a sheet. I've got a couple of the John Deere ones. Okay. Anybody here have a John Deere radial meter? Really? Nobody. Not one. Geez, I got a couple crates of them that somebody could buy if they want. I'm sure Phil would like to get rid of them. What's that? Well, I got a couple of crates. I'll gladly, I'll gladly sell them to you. I mean, there's a, I actually printed something off for it. I brought one. I did some research. Not one damn person. Okay, what does that tell you? You are? Your radial? Does anybody know what a radial meter is? This is John Deere's attempt to knock the brush meter off. Okay, and not one person in here uses it. What's wrong with it? Yeah, this, this meter will not go underneath 2,200 seeds per pound. There is no plate, there is no anything. Okay, so that's enough said about that. Okay, pick up. Okay. All right. What's different about this? No, it's not an antique. We still sell them on brand new planters. Yep. What's different about this than a standard finger pickup? Does anybody know off the bat? You can tell by just looking at it quickly. It's got precision parts in it. Okay. So in our facility, we do not, we, on our test stand, we have to have 98.5 or better percent on our test stand to pass. So if I take a brand new John Deere finger pickup or a brand new Kinsey finger pickup, can I get achieve 98.5? Do you think I can, Neil? Do you think Jennifer can? Yeah, he's right. I can probably get to 97 if I dick around for a while. If I mess around for a while, I can probably get to 97. That's about it. So as a company, what do you think we make more on? Do you think we make more on a Kinsey part for a finger pickup or a precision part? We make a lot more money on a Kinsey part than we do a precision part. We won't put those parts in those meters though. We'll use their belts, we'll use their bushings, we'll use their sprockets, and we'll use the, the, the core of it because they're the same as everybody else. Same with John Deere. But we will not use the finger or the back plate. So if you're still running out there, with the old school, that's an old school. That happens to be a Kinsey. You can pass that around. This is a precision. You can pass that around. If you're still running the old school parts, you either have not had your meters done for a long time by us. I'm not sure the other companies what they're doing. Or you're... I guess that's all the only reason why it would be because if you come here if Jennifer gets a customer that says I will not spend the money on the precision parts and it's failing she then comes to me and then I call you 
because we do not want to release finger pickups from our facility that are not a pass because you're going to take that finger pickup home and you're going to use it and you're going to say it didn't plant worth a darn i spent all this money and it doesn't plant worth a darn meanwhile we probably called you twice telling you it wasn't going to plant worth a darn so what i do to convince you is i do a cost study quickly over the phone i ask you to what is your yield what we think you're going to lose we tell you the results of the test we take the results if you're let's say you're at 97 percent and we want to be at 98.5 we take that 1.5 i half that for a yield advantage do you think that's accurate i'm probably conservative right so that that would be three quarters of a point right that's pretty conservative okay so i always go that way then I go and I take your average yield for crop insurance. I take what you think you're going to sell your crop for this year and how many acres you grow. And then I give you your payback. I have never done one yet where you didn't pay back in two years. Most of the time you double your money or triple your money the very first year. It's a no brainer. It's a no brainer. I've even taken and done that in a quarter and shown them that they're doubling the money the first year depending on their acreage. I had a 100 acre guy last year say to me, there's no way you can convince me that this is ever gonna pay for me to spend $160 a meter to change it over. And when we got done, he said, you did, you convinced me, do them. In one year, he made his money back. And we figured he probably was gonna be 10 years before he had to do the meters because he was only doing 100, meter, 100 acres a year on a six row planter, so. Graphite, graphite, graphite with the finger pickups. Don't, there's no reason to use fluency. Save yourself the aggravation. You don't have to mix the graphite, or you don't, you know, the fluency, you gotta use it. I know Neil wants to get it out of his barn. I know you wanna get it out of your barn. No, don't do it, okay? We've done it here, we've seen it, we've gone to the field, use the graphite, okay? Same rate as the brush meter. You'll make your life a lot better. One thing I do want to say, if you haven't had your meters tested in the last few years, you need to get your meters tested. You cannot believe the shape of some of the meters that we throw on the stand. It is nothing for us to see low 90s. Nothing at all. Okay? How many acres per meter would you recommend? I usually say, um, so if you're running like a six row planter and you're running 500 acres, we would usually say about every three years, right, Matt? Yeah. But like, if you're running 200 acres and you've got a six row planter, you know, you should, yeah, I guess I'm a little bit low on that. Yeah, I, probably if you're doing 500 acres, you, you should be doing about every other year for a six row. But if you're only doing 200 acres, you can go three or four years. But we get tons of meters in that have not been touched for 10 years. No, vacuum meters, you should be able to take a good look at it. So when you're, when you're inspecting your vacuum meter, we want to really check your brush situation and um, what's that? Seal. Seal. That's a good point. So on the John Deere vac guys, we were doing a test the other day with a customer's meter and we couldn't get it to come up. I could lose just about anything. Here it is. Right with the sheet I lost. Okay, we couldn't get the test to come up. We checked the vacuum meter over, it was perfect. There was nothing wrong with it. It was exactly the same as all the other ones in that customer's lot. But there was one, we could not get the numbers to come up. But Jennifer noticed the torque on our test stand, we have a rolling torque, and the torque was hard. So we got looking at everything, and finally I said, Jennifer, if you take and feel the seal on this, there wasn't one single crack in it, it looked good, it felt good, but if you felt the seal on it and felt the one beside it that was sitting at 99 something, this would, the difference was the one that wasn't very good, the seal was very firm and hard, okay? Compared to the other one. On its own, it felt fine. I said, for, just for fun, let's pull that out, put a new one in, boom. Torque went down, she planted perfect. She was right up in the high 98s, low 99s. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it does all that. That's, what, that's why when we're doing stuff like that, we can just get everything so fine-tuned. Okay. All right. 